To learn more about earning college credits with study hall courses, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. Have you ever looked at someone and wondered how on earth they got their job? Like what even is a consultant or a water sommelier? Uh, this is a mineral rich sample from a, a rainwater aquifer in Spain. Delicious and I think this one's just from the bathroom faucet. Truthfully, I have no idea how to become a water sommelier, but some fields are less mysterious. Like, take Yusuf and Rose. They both want to become psychologists, so they're both majoring in psychology. Makes sense. But through their introductory psych classes, Yusuf and Rose have learned that it's not all so straightforward. Yusuf has discovered that he's really interested in becoming a counselor after graduating. He wants to help people one-on-one -on -one to manage their mental health concerns. And Rose has learned that she's interested in finding new ways to help Alzheimer's patients cope with their illness. So Rose wants to do more behind the scenes research, maybe working at a university or a research institute. But they're not quite sure how to pursue these different goals or even how different their goals really are. Just like in any other field, it can be really hard and confusing to navigate an academic or career path in psychology. There are lots of options, and the different paths can meet and cross and diverge in different ways. So that means that whether you want to be a counselor or a researcher or a water sommelier, there are plenty of ways to meet your goals. Hi, I'm Deja Fitzgerald, and this is Study Hall, Intro to Psychology. Picking a path in psychology is kind of like picking which water to drink. You can basically never go wrong drinking water, but there are some differences in mineral content, oxygen levels, flavor, and where that water comes from. Psychology is similar. There is a lot of overlap between different fields like counseling and research. Both professions focus on human psychology and how people's brains work, but they do that in slightly different ways, and they come from slightly different backgrounds. Sometimes called therapy, Counseling is defined by the American Counseling Association as a professional relationship that empowers diverse individuals, families, and groups to accomplish mental health, wellness, education, and career goals. Meanwhile, the science of psychology developed as a way to study human thought and behavior. It eventually focused on unusual thought patterns and behaviors, which are also known as psychopathology. Both fields got their start in the late 1800s. One early counseling service aimed to support students' educational pursuits and evaluate people's skills and personalities to match them with potential careers. This was known as vocational counseling. It's kind of like those tests in high school that tell you what profession you'd be good at. Weirdly, I don't think water sommelier was an option. And vocational counselors were onto something. So throughout the early 20th century, counseling began to focus on using personalized treatment to help people learn more about themselves and manage personal issues. Meanwhile, psychologists and medical doctors studied psychopathology to learn more about the causes and treatments for psychological disorders. In the early 1900s, advocates exposed the horrific conditions of overcrowded mental health facilities where patients were neglected, restrained, and abused. Some counselors and psychologists started looking for new, humane ways to care for people's mental health, including making hospitals and treatment centers safer for patients. But truthfully, there were still plenty of people behaving less than humanely under the guise of treatment or research. Think lobotomies and electric shock therapy, neither of which are banned in the United States even today. Both fields have continued to evolve and develop better ways to help people. Today, counselors use psychological research to work directly with clients to manage mental, emotional, and behavioral issues. They also work with patients to set goals, improve coping skills, build self-esteem, and change unhealthy behaviors. And psychologists still pursue the goals of research and improving patient care. They work in a variety of settings like labs or universities, and they may focus on psychological research like how our physiology, emotions, and relationships affect our behavior. They also have the option to become clinicians. This would be similar to counseling in that they might work closely with clients, but a clinical psychologist might focus more on psychopathology or assessment rather than addressing specific social and emotional concerns. So both psychologists and counselors want to better understand the human mind and behavior so they can 
and help people. But one difference between psychologists and counselors in the United States is the amount and type of training they have. Which means that even though Yusuf and Rose start on the same path and will both graduate with a bachelor's degree in psychology, they'll need to branch out a bit to pursue their individual goals. Yusuf needs at least a master's degree if he wants to become a counselor, and there are a variety of options for him to consider. For example, he could get a master's in social work, counseling, school psychology, or marriage and family therapy. These programs will prepare Yusuf to become a counselor by applying psychological research in a one-on-one -on -one or group therapeutic setting. In his coursework, Yusuf will learn how to assess clients, arrive at a diagnosis, and then collaborate with clients to form a treatment plan that fits their needs. Yusuf's degree will also require him to gain clinical experience, often called a practicum. He'll work with real patients while supervised by a licensed counselor to learn what it's like to work with people on improving their mental health. Rose, on the other hand, is interested in masters of psychology. They usually take about two years to complete, and they focus more on theories and research. So Rose will dive into topics like cognition and developmental psychology, and she'll hone her research skills by conducting experiments and presenting her findings. With a master's degree, Rose and Yusuf will already be qualified for many career paths, but to have even more options available to them, they could both also choose to get a doctoral degree in psychology. These fall into two categories, PhDs and PsyDs. A PhD, or a Doctor of Philosophy, is a research-focused degree. Most PhD programs can take between five and eight years to complete, which, believe me, can feel like forever. And they train students to conduct rigorous, independent research in a specialized field, like developmental psychology or neuropsychology. Some programs focus only on research, but others, like the one I'm doing, train students in research methods and clinical practice. This is known as a scientist practitioner model. With a PhD in clinical or counseling psychology, I'll be able to teach, research, or counsel, or all three, which means a PhD in psychology comes with lots of professional flexibility. A PhD could be a great fit for Rose, since she's most interested in research. Since Yusuf is more like me and wants to work closely with clients, he might also be a good fit for a clinical PhD program, or he could pursue a PsyD, or a Doctor of Psychology. PsyD programs focus on applying psychological research, theory, and methods to clinical care, which is known as applied psychology. Many graduates with a PsyD go into clinical practice. These degrees typically take three to five years to finish. And while there are many public institutions that have PhD programs in clinical or counseling psychology, most PsyD programs are at private universities, so they can also be a bit more expensive. So both Yusuf and Rose have several options to consider when it comes to their education. And as they progress in their careers, they'll have to prepare for a few different professional requirements as well. After completing all her education, Rose is ready to start a research job, but Yusuf still has one more step to complete before he can jump into his career. Just like you need a license to drive a car, Yusuf has to get a license to provide counseling. Earning a license proves that Yusuf is qualified and can provide safe and effective care for clients. Each state has its own licensing practices, but most require future counselors to have a certain amount of clinical experience or clinical hours, as well as a clinical master's degree from accredited program. They also accept PsyDs or PhDs from programs that have accreditation. Then, most states require future counselors to pass an exam that covers information they'll need to give their clients a high standard of care. And for counselors to stay licensed year after year, their licensing board requires something called continuing education. This keeps counselors up to date on new modalities or types of therapies and trends that impact their clients. There's no formal licensing process for research psychologists like Rose, but it's important for her to keep learning and stay current on new research and advancements too. Along with continuing education, Rose and Yusuf can ensure they're providing quality care and improving mental health outcomes for people by following best practices and ethics guidelines for counselors and psychologists. For example, the American Counseling Association and the American Psychological Association have guidelines for practicing with honesty and integrity, which are known as a code of ethics. Counselors at all different levels of education will see many different client situations that require discretion, sensitivity, and thoughtful communication pretty much every day. Code of ethics helps both researchers and counselors protect the people they work with. It also helps clinicians provide customized care for people who fit into different social, cultural, gender, or age groups. Using demographics like these helps counselors meet their clients' unique needs. 
The APA also has numerous guidelines for practitioners that hone in on specific communities and situations. For instance, Yusuf knows he'll need to develop the clinical skills to understand how culture interacts with things like racial trauma or the experiences of LGBTQ youth if he wants to provide ethical care to his clients. There are ethical standards for psychological researchers too. These standards are implemented and overseen by organizations such as the Institutional Review Board. In her research, Rose will handle sensitive data, and she'll have to ensure her research protects the confidentiality, welfare, and dignity of each participant. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to counseling or research, and professionals in both fields need to keep learning and adjust their practices so that people always have access to the best care possible. Psychology is a big field, and it provides lots of career paths for people with a wide variety of skills and interests. So it's helpful to be aware of the many ways psychologists are involved in helping people. But like I said before, you pretty much can't go wrong drinking water. And whether you drink sparkling or still, or whatever comes out of the bathroom faucet, is largely a matter of personal preference, or what's available to you at the time. There's no wrong answers when it comes to your career either. You get to pick the path that feels right to you and where the most doors are open for you. Regardless of which path you take, the journey to becoming a qualified professional has many tracks, with many steps. Which means you have lots of opportunities to broaden or narrow your focus, or change your path altogether. It might take time and experimentation to decide which path and career opportunities are right for you. But the field of psychology is always changing as we learn new things about human behavior and society. And people are complex, so chances are we won't have us all figured out anytime soon. There will always be opportunities to learn more, make new connections, and help more people. If you're enjoying Study Hall, Intro to Psychology, and are interested in taking an online course and earning college credit, go to gostudyhall.com or click this button to learn more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.